Okay, so uh, yeah, WordPress 6 uh, came out uh, last month, I think, and I was just going to show some of the things that I noticed about it. It's not a major change, but uh, it's got a couple of neat little features. Uh, can everybody see my screen? Yep. Okay. All right, so um, here's... Uh, I'll basically just walk you through the differences, uh, some of the new things. So uh, one of the features is the enhanced writing experience. Um, and has a couple of things that uh, selecting multiple blocks is now easier. So I'm going to actually edit this page so you can see how that works. Uh, it used to be that when you were selecting text uh, within multiple blocks it was it was a bit difficult it would either you could only select text within a, bo a block or you would end up having to select all of the all of the uh, block content and now you can actually select um, you can select text within multiple blocks so that's kind of a new uh, little feature And uh, another thing is if you're wanting to quickly add a link to another page, all you have to do is uh, type uh, double uh, square brackets, so hit it twice here, and now it's going to pull up all the pages that I have. These aren't posts, these are, these are pages. Uh, but that's a nice little feature, so, you know, it's one, one, one little time saver if you're trying to just link to something really quick. Uh, another thing is that you can keep existing file, uh, sorry, styles when you switch from one block to another. So, let me, let me remove this block and... I add a little more space so everybody can see what I'm doing. So here I have, I've got a paragraph block and I've changed the styles a little bit. I've got some bold and some italics and uh, some other things. And normally what would happen is that these inline styles, if I convert it to a different block type, it would lose that styling, but now it will actually keep it. So I'm going to duplicate this block. And then I'm going to change it to, let's change it to quote. So there you can see that it's, um, some, the, it uh, retains the styling. Uh, that's a little, nice little feature. The other thing is that if you uh, create some styled buttons, and you're, you're trying to create uh, a bunch in a row uh, and you make a different, uh, you make a change to one of the button styles and then create another button, it, it will retain that style. Uh, let me give you an example. Well, actually this is, this is a good example right here where uh, it basically copied the same style of this ugly pumpkin looking button uh, over to new one, so it's the new pumpkin button. <laughs> and then there's some other things. Uh, uh, the what is it? The social icons here are you have a little more control over the styling. Um, I can't really remember what they were before. I think that they were just the icons themselves so now you can actually have labels inside of them so I put in uh, like a hashtag uh, yeah, you have to open it up there and put the label there it's a little strange and then everybody was dying for this uh, the tag cloud now you can have default or you can have an outline style if anybody cared I I personally thought, ah, this is so what, that doesn't really matter that much. But 
that's something you can do. What, 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 can you explain that a little bit more there? I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> what, what the uh, tag cloud is? <laughs> And getting to your point about it not being super exciting. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. No, no, it, it, yeah, uh, the tag cloud, the tag cloud. What, what is that? Okay, uh, well, here, let me change it back to uh, what it originally was. Remember, who here remembers Blogger? Nobody? Okay, well, this was something where you go to a blog and, and the tag cloud would basically, it... It shows each of your tags, and then it increases the size depending on if if you if you have more posts that are that like for example the post format tag has 15 posts while the markup tag only has six posts, and so it changes the size of of that. I don't know why that. That was just kind of a thing back in 1996, you know, that was kind of a cool way of, of doing it. So this is one of those uh, legacy things, but you do have control over it. You know, for example, in the, um, in the block settings, um, I can change it to say, I just want to make everything the exact same size. I could, I could just say 16, 16. And there you go. You got don't have, uh, you you don't have that awkward sizing. I thought it looked kind of dumb, but it it was just how how a lot of people were doing it. And then I could turn off the post counts, and then it then it looks a little more like what you will sometimes see um, at a post where it's like this post has been tagged, this this and this. Um, Oh, however, you know, I could really go to town and and have it something, you know, uh, let's go to 64. There we go. Look at that. Oh. But yeah, it's just one of the weird, weird things. But that was a feature that, that WordPress mentioned. You know, I read <laughs> somewhere that tags were like totally useless and to stop using them. So I kind of stopped using tags. Does, do people still use tags? Yeah, you can you can still use them. Uh, they're um, they are a taxonomy that can be. Uh, I, it's something where uh, it's an age old controversy of like which is better, categories or tags. Um, how are you supposed to use categories and tags? Um, I, I think that categories are more general. Um, tags are kind of a little more specific and they're not as important as, say, categorizing things. But this is just a, this, this, this block is just something that's there and they featured it. And, and actually, I can change it from tags to categories if I want. Uh, which is kind of a neat thing, although a little misleading because it says tag cloud. Um, so now it's showing the categories instead of the tags. So, well, whatever that's worth. Yeah. Yeah, I think when it comes to tags and, and um, categories, it doesn't benefit for SEO anymore. I think it might have in the past, but that might be where where you're getting that. Yeah, that's, I think that's where I read it is that tags were actually making the SEO worse, so I stopped using them. Yeah, they they could be uh, potentially worse because sometimes people will use tags to like try to stuff, like they'll repeat tags a billion times. I've seen that done, and uh, yeah, that's just not a not a good idea. Yeah, you know, here's an example of how you could how you could benefit from uh, categories and tags. So say I had a portfolio, say my website was just portfolio, I'm not blogging or anything. Um, actually, let's, let's, uh, let me change that. Let's pretend, okay, I'm blogging and I'm, I'm blogging about uh, web design and uh, 
Korean food. I'm just throwing out, you know, some weird, weird categories. Web, web design, Korean food, and dogs. Okay. So those could be my categories. <laughs> and then if I make a, a, if I write a blog post, um, I could have web design as my category, but then I could get into something specific like uh, WordPress or the block editor and use that as a tag. And then, you know, I'm writing about the dog. I could, I could write, you know, my tag could be dog food or something. Now that's, you know, that's just kind of a weird, uh, an example of how you can use both. Yeah. I, I, in that case, I would, I've never really messed with the tags, I have to say. So I'm glad to hear people saying that they don't matter. <laughs> but, um, you know, you can always do subcategories too. Yeah. Like you can have categories under categories. Yeah. So under dogs, you can have beagles and and labradoodles and whatever else. You yeah, know, exactly. Uh, yeah, it's subcategories, you know. Yeah. So. All right. The next, uh, the next feature is style switching. Um, who here, if, if anybody, has played around with the new block themes, like the default WordPress theme? Nobody? Okay. Um, I'm sorry, I can't see everybody here. I'm trying to change the view so I can see more people. But anyway, I'm going to show, uh, this is a, a new, new feature. Uh, this is a, a big limitation when it, they first came out was that you really couldn't uh, control things that much. So I'm using the default uh, 2022 theme right now, and I'm going to show you how the style switching works. I'm going to go up here to edit site, and then I'm going to go over here to styles, and click on that, and then uh, browse styles. And so this will allow me to switch different styles that this theme has been set for. Now this is very similar, I would say, to uh, other, other themes where you would go to the customizer and you could sometimes change uh, the, the theme. I think, like for example, I think Dibby has that capability somewhere. And uh, I know it's a lot of other themes have that functionality, but this is now something that you can do within the block editor. So if I click on this one, uh, this will bring up the default. Uh, I, I think this is, yeah, this is the default style. Um, this is the blue style. This is the pink one. And then this is the Swiss one. So that's kind of that's can kind you of how your own? yeah you can create your own um, now the way there are two ways you could create your own one is that you could develop a theme on your own um, I don't know if if child themes will work with this yet but you can you can either create your own but the other thing is that uh, with the full site editing is that you do have the ability to override these styles. Um, for example, I had the blue theme selected before. Okay, when I switch back to it, I was expecting it to allow me to save it, but it, it's not. Uh, probably because I already had that selected. But you can you can override uh, the styles, um, either uh, by uh, changing uh, in the theme. There's a there's a theme dot JSON file that you can, you basically that's where you uh, create the style the, the additional style that you want. Um, when when I, when I'm done with this presentation, I'll I'll share a link in the chat to show you where to go for for that but anyway so this is this is uh, what you can do so for example i can i can select the pink the uh, pink style I click save 
and hopefully it won't do too much damage and then go back to the dashboard that's the one thing i don't like about the um the full site editing is there's not a very quick way to get right back to wordpress make sure this thing still works okay good um that, that's for something else I'm going to show really quickly. So I'm going to switch back to the blue theme, or sorry, the blue style. Still the same theme, but a different style. Click save, and then go back up front again. Uh, this is another thing that I've noticed is that the... Sometimes when using the full site editing, it seems like some things can get stuck. Uh, like it, there seems to be a, like a caching issue sometimes, mm. which is unfortunate. Let me try. You know what? This is this is close enough. I'm I'm not gonna try to switch it. But yeah, that's actually a, that's that's been something I've I've noticed that apparently hasn't been fixed in this um, uh, this latest release. Uh, hopefully they'll fix it soon. But uh, sometimes when you are adjusting styles, you've got to like completely clear out your cache in order to get get things to to refresh. And I think that's because of the way that WordPress is now rendering or generating the, the CSS uh, for styling uh, the, the site. Anyway, that's how style switching works. Um, there's some other features. We've got the integrated patterns. Who here has used patterns in WordPress? OK, all right, good. Um, in case you're wondering what uh, pattern. I have a question. Yeah. Um, when you're talking about cleaning your cache, you're talking about your local cache, or is there a server-side cache that they there, that you think there seems to be in WordPress with this new version? In this case, I'm I'm uh, running a uh, local WP, and so it, it's a local cache. Uh, but if this was on a server, I would be assuming that it, it would be a server uh, cache so if you if you had something like cloudflare or something else you would want to try to clear it out um i think sometimes you, you can you can kind of force it to clear out if you like make one little tweak to a style somewhere and and then update it and sometimes that will that, that will give it the the nudge that it needs but yeah it's a it's a it's a it's a problem, I think. Okay, so the in integrated patterns. Um, if you're wondering about patterns, patterns are something that uh, WordPress has been uh, promoting a lot lately. Um, if you're wondering what they are, you basically can insert them by uh, clicking up here the the big blue uh, block inserter, and then switching over to the pattern tab. And what this does is it basically shows a bunch of, they call them patterns. We've probably seen them before uh, in uh, like page builders of templates, like Elementor and I think Divi would call these templates. So if I wanted to, uh, I wanted to add an event pattern that, that would, that would pop it in place, and you can you can search uh, search for them up here. There's also ones that uh, they're they're categorized. So say I just want to find something that has some buttons on it, and so okay, here we go. I'm looking for a pricing table, so then you can add that in. So it's a it, you know it's a nice little way of of quickly adding. Uh, if if you're just trying to build a site really fast and you can 
find most of what you're looking here, looking for here, or you can, you know, make a few tweaks. Um, the patterns have been there for a while. I, I don't uh, exactly know what they mean by better integration. Let's see what happens. I click explore. Okay, this picks puts up a modal. I thought there was something that allowed you to like search the WordPress repo, but uh, I'm not sure about that. But anyway, well, that's 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 uh, what's there. Well, we click update so I can just go back to the page. And so here you see that large, um, I believe this is like a media block. And then we have uh, uh, three uh, blocks underneath. So that's the integrated patterns. I'm trying to make sure I don't forget anything. Okay, here's Here's actually, I think, kind of the interesting part. And um, I'm going to edit this page. This is basically the additional design tools. And so, uh, open this up and actually see what it does. So, one of the things is that they've changed the color panel. So, here I've got the text that is a kind of a, a, a salmon color. And a nice thing now, I I think before there was nothing up here that told you what color it was or uh, what the hex code was. But now if you, you switch it, you'll see it, it updates. And um, the other thing I can do is I can, I can cha change it right here. So see how it's, it's now, it's no longer referring to a color that's defined in the theme, but uh, I'm now creating a custom color. How did you bring that up? Yeah. Oh, well, it's a secret. Um, that's, that's, an, uh, that's another issue with the site editor is like some of these, some of these things are like, uh, they're, they're mysteries. Uh, the way way you get to it, let me let me reselect the theme color that I had originally. Uh, the way to pull up the color picker is to click not not here, but up here. But okay. see, there's nothing that tells you to do that, so that <laughs> that's a problem. That's I I've been reading. That's been one of the biggest complaints about um, the the whole Gutenberg project is has been like lack of a accessibility on when it comes to certain things and and uh, like this this is a good example uh, but here you you know you can change the hue um, but you can also uh, let me let me change it to something that you can see a little better so down here you can change the opacity so there it looks like it's it's getting darker, but it's actually uh, becoming more opaque. And uh, this is basically it's a uh, a hex with an alpha uh, at the end. So if you know your hexadecimal code, you you can edit that really quickly. But you can also change it to RGB and HSL. I I actually like HSL. Um, I think it's a little easier to understand so that that's a nice little thing is that you can do uh, alpha transparency so for example this block that it, it looks like you can't see it well the reason you can't see it is it's um it's got a strong color as you can see right here but the 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 alpha has been uh, or sorry the opacity has been turned way down so if i increase that then I can I can actually see uh, the background and then if I do the same thing for the text so I'll just crank that up so this is kind of a nice little feature um, uh, another thing is that uh, you've got some more border controls so let me uh, collapse some of these panels you know 
Well, you should be able to collapse them. I don't know why you can't. Uh, but uh, here you can change the, the border. You can make it solid, dash, or dotted. Um, I can make it rounded if I want. And then I can do a similar thing where I can increase the opacity. So if I wanted something that just like the border just barely is noticeable, um, I can do that right there. Another feature that they've got, and I'm going to open up the list view so you can see it a little bit better, is, okay, with, I, I believe the previous version of Gutenberg, you, you pretty much had groups, and that was it. Well, now you've got groups, and you've got rows, and you've got stacks. And so, for example, here I've got a row of two paragraphs uh, side by side. Now you might be thinking this is this is almost identical to the column block. Um, it's very similar, but there are some differences. Uh, if you're, I think this this one gives you a little bit more control. And if you've done any development in, say. Say a framework like Bootstrap. Um, Bootstrap uh, has columns, you know, rows and columns, uh, but they've also got some utility classes uh, that are basically uh, for for stacking things together using uh, using Flexbox. And so this uh, this basically it gives you that capability. So. Uh, here I can I can change the you know I can change it from uh, a row to a stack, and I can I can change some other things. If I change the justification, you're not really going to see much. I think that I have I think I have a better example somewhere else that that shows. Hey, Aaron. That. Yes. What, what, what's the difference between you having? Um... Uh, horizontally or vertically stacked, and then orientation. What's the difference between those two things? Like you have uh, control over there for arrange the blocks horizontally or vertically, and then you have orientation below that. What's yeah? Uh, all it's weird. All it does is it just switches between the two. Oh, those are yeah. redundant. Then. Yes, it's a redundant button. I, I don't know why it's there, <laughs> <laughs> but it is. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's a uh, it, it exactly. I was thinking like oh, there must be some difference, but it's like no, no, there isn't. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Then there's some there's some weird things. I'm not I'm not exactly sure uh, uh, how this works, but this is this is a nice feature. Like if you are using full site editing and you're trying to. Uh, Modify the header. Uh, the nice thing about it is that you can. Let, let, me, let me do something. Um, let me just start a start a new one. So I'm going to do a site logo. Okay, so I've got the got the WordPress logo that you can barely see there, but just just bear with me for a second, um, and then. Uh, site title. Okay, Word, WordPress six. Okay, so what I'm able to do is I can group these together and make them a row. And it's like, okay, well that's that's uh, that's neat. Can you do that again. Um, but the the other thing is that I can space these two. Uh, um space them apart and actually if i go to how, how did you group the two um here let me let me redo it so you can you can see it okay so 
all you got to do is you just select both blocks. Um, probably the easiest way of doing it is going over to the list view and holding down shift and selecting both of them. Okay. okay. Which is a new thing that you can do. It, you used to not be able to do that. You used to only be able to select one uh, block at a time. And then right here, it oh, gives you the sure. option to either group or to row or, or create a row or or a stack. And if Got I it. make a mistake and and select group, I can change that over here. I can say, oh, I meant, you know, change it to a row. Got it. Yeah. And, um, and one of the things I can do is I can change the justification so that, you know, everything's centered in the middle, or I can have like space in between them. Yeah. Sorry, my dog's woofing at me. Um, and so, for example, if I go to the, if I go to the homepage and, and click edit site, I'm going to show you kind of how the top navigation works is that you basically have got a row here and it's set to uh, space between the items. It's it's basically set between this row and this navigation. So this area right here, it's basically everything getting forced uh, to the edges. And then I have a, a nested row in there where I've got the, the logo and the site title and then the navigation, um, which is over on this side. So that's what kind of makes it handy because prior to this version, uh, you had to try to tr uh, you had to try to use columns to do that, and you you columns doesn't uh, doesn't give you as much control as uh, the row and the uh, stack uh, blocks do. It's got it still has its limitations, but uh, it does give you more features. Did I, did I hear a that's question? A, that's a nice thing. The row thing is a nice thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the last thing, at least for the styling, is that um, the go down. You you do now have the ability on most blocks to do block spacing. So let me reset this back to its original. Um, original setting. So here's a gallery of, of some uh, fractal artwork that my dad made. And um, I can, you know, I've, I've got, uh, this is just basically using a gallery block with uh, four images in there, nothing fancy. Um, but, oops, sorry. But uh, one of the things I don't like about it is this big gap between them. And you used to have no control over it unless you wanted to, you know, write some CSS. Well, now I can actually control the spacing. So, uh, for example, I can say I, I just want five pixels or I want to have one pixel of space, you know, kind of like a hairline or I could have no pixels. And so that's kind of a nice little uh, control uh, that you've got uh, for uh, for that, it also works for other uh, other things. For example, this row, uh, this row right up here. Okay, so uh, this this is a row, and I'm I can control the block spacing between it. I can make it so they're adjacent to one another. Um, can I do a negative number? Eh, I probably don't want to do that. I can make it so that you know there's there's a lot of space, and that was a that was something you couldn't do with columns, and I don't think you can do it with columns. In fact, let me, let me just double check, make sure. I think columns has padding setting or something like that. But... Yeah, columns has padding settings, but not uh so i can like change you know i'm changing the background here 
but yeah oh there is block spacing control okay so if you wanted to have a tighter how did you get that to happen did you hover over padding or oh oh there it is yeah okay. it, uh, yeah it's right here oh 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 got it got by it. default it, it let me change it back to what it originally was a default you normally just see padding here but uh, it looks like you can adjust the block spacing and by the way, um, you might have noticed when I typed in one pixel uh, or one px, uh, it, it didn't work. You can con you can change the uh, the unit of measure uh, over here. So uh, that's just something to keep in mind. So that's uh, that's the additional design. I'm sorry. What was that? On the margin, on the block yeah, spacing. Yeah. It's Stuart. You're you're you sound like gargling. I don't know why. I think I, I, think I have some internet problems. Okay. <laughs> we can kind of make it out. But. Yeah. All right. Uh, another feature is the better list view. We kind of uh, saw this uh, previously. But uh, it used to be that you could only select one item at a time, and it was a, a big hassle. But now you can actually, if you hold shift down, um, you can select multiple uh, items. And then also you can drag and drop. So I can take these and drag them up here. And this is... This is some. This is like a feature that Elementor and uh, Divi uh, have. Like if you, um, that that's something that they've had for a very long time, and so finally WordPress that has that uh, capability. So that's a that's a nice little little thing. Um, I showed the integrated patterns already. More template choices. Okay, um, not to anyway. They they've uh, they've added some more temp uh, the ability to make more templates. Um, I'm going to show you how that works. Uh, last, uh, at the last version, uh, version uh, 5.9, if you went over here to create a new template you had a choice between i think you actually only had one choice i think it was like page or post or something like that um but you couldn't do something like uh create a category uh template or a taxonomy template um now from what i've read I don't believe, and I could be wrong about this, um, I don't believe that the full site editing has the capability yet to create a template for a specific category or a specific um, tag or, or taxonomy type. Um, that's something that I believe you still have to do some PHP for, but uh, it does allow you to uh, create things like a, a category archive type page, which is uh, something I created here. So everything, everything down here is all uh, out of the box with uh, 2022, uh, except this one where uh, if I hover, it's got the little blue dot on it, it says this template has been customized. Uh, that's because I, I made a couple of changes to it. I got, I got rid of the default theme comes with like this big bird, not big bird, but this bird image like flying around. And I got rid of that because not, not that I have a problem with birds, but I just thought it was kind of weird. Um, anyway, so this was a, a template that I created. And 
what it's got is it's got it's got a, a header that is uh, I basically imported the header that that uh, it comes with. Um, then I've got uh, a group and a stack. The reason I put the stack here is because of the ability to control the block spacing because without that, let me change it back to, I don't want to completely reset it. Let me just remove that. See, there's like this big space between these two. I didn't want that. So what I did was I wrapped it within a stack block. And that way I can put the uh, term description right underneath the archive title. And then underneath that is a, a query loop. Um, and let me scroll down to where you can kind of see a little better uh, what's going on here. So one of the things you can do now is you can use a featured image for a cover block. Uh, the only way that that's going to, to work is if you are doing full site editing. Because otherwise, there's kind of no point. I suppose that you could, um, if you were editing a theme, and I've actually done this where uh, you can you can use the same styles to to do that if you're using uh, you know a classic theme um, and doing the coding that way if you want. But this is this is something where you can actually uh, pick the featured image uh, for for a, a cover block. Cover blocks is one of my favorite blocks. Um, I I think it's pretty popular. So what I've got here is, uh, again, this is one of those buttons that on the WordPress website, it, it says, it says use featured image, but it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't say that unless you hover over it. So you, you would be wondering like, what well, what is this thing? Because all, all I see is add media. In fact, at first, I assumed that add media and this icon stood for add media and I had heard about the uh, featured image and for the cover block and was like, how do you do this? How do you add this thing? And then I saw somewhere it's like, oh, it's this icon that's next to a, a, another phrase. Okay. So anyway, so that's <laughs> how you do that. Um, and then I've applied a duo tone filter, just kind of make it look cool. And then what I've done is I've, I've done a little, uh, some things with some stacks where I've got uh, the top, which has the, uh, which has the date, uh, and then the bottom, which has the block gallery, or sorry, it, it has the uh, post title. And then in, I basically just did a little experimentation with the uh, the opacity of the colors and stuff, and then also uh, with the the stack and the fact that I can you know force it to uh, justify, and uh, you know, I came up with this this archive uh, type. Now it's it, this this only works if you've got like a featured image, like you see right here is completely empty. Um, so that's kind of a, a limitation, but let me go back to the, this page. So this is kind of a preview of what it looks like. So this is basically um, an archive page that I created using no code whatsoever. And it has its limitations, but it's it's pretty cool, like what you can do now. Um, and uh, I think that is it. Um, I'm going to 
I'm going to stop sharing so I can get everybody back on the screen because I saw something. Um, okay, here's some navigation block kept messing up. Seems to work better with 6.0. Yes, yeah, the navigation uh, block has been improved. It still is, I, I think it's very tricky to try to, to, to try to uh, adjust the navigation using the navigation block. Does anybody want to see how that works? Okay. All right, let me share it again. Okay, so the way that you would adjust the navigation block, I'm going to go to edit site. And when you're doing this, you pretty much have to have the list view open, but then you've also got to make the page wide enough. And you'll find out why, because it, it can just be really hard to figure out where on earth you are. So here I'm having to go into nested thing after thing. All right, here we go. What I've done is to make things uh, easier for for me is I I change I uh, I made this navigation block a template in and of itself. That way I could just it, it would be isolated and I could edit it um, but right here, this with the little, it looks like the compass symbol, this is the actual navigation block. And so, uh, if you open this up, you can kind of see like what, what is in here. But one of the things I, I don't like about the navigation block is that in order to add an item, Of course, now, now that I'm complaining about it, now it's going to work. Um, <laughs> no, no, that was not, that's not, that's, that's not working. Okay. Okay, good. My, I'm justified. Okay, so, so for example, I would love to be able to add, add something, you know, add a, a, a menu item right underneath enhanced writing experience right up here. And the problem is I can't. There's, there's no way to add it. I suppose I could duplicate it, but then that's duplicating uh, uh, the link, not creating a new one. So uh -huh. I have to, the only way to add things is really to uh, s select the, you got to make sure you're selecting the right plus button because it can get really confusing. So here it's like, okay, this is, uh, let me, I'm just gonna type in a random post. Okay, so that, that works really easily. Let's say I wanna add something to uh, the, I wanna add something to the right of featured image. And this is where it becomes confusing because you've got, you got the, this toolbar is like hiding stuff and I'm like where 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 how do, how do I get to this thing oh that that must be what I click right no that's not what I click and and it 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 can be very frustrating sometimes mm -hmm. um I believe it there we go okay now I can believe if I click that there we go. That will, so I could add it, add, add something right there. But yeah, it, it can be, it can, it can be kind of frustrating uh, using the navigation. The other thing is that, um, unlike with the customizer, where you would have this, the screen open, you'd have kind of like uh, a bunch of things you could search for, like you could search for. You could just search for categories or tags or certain custom post types uh, or, or just pages. Or if you're using like WooCommerce, you could search for products. 
one of the limitations I see with this is that you can't do that. Um, you, you basically, you, you have to know, like I, I can't scroll more than three items. So I have to, I have to search for what I'm trying to add. So I need to mentally know exactly what I, I want to add. And I find that kind of frustrating. That, that's a limit, limitation, I think. But there are some, there are some really nice things about it in that you can, it, it does make, move that one. It does make modifying your navigation uh, quite a bit easier, I think. Uh, I think it's, I think it's worth it for the, the fact that you can basically edit the entire site without having to touch any code at all. And part of me, you know, as a web developer, you know, I, I kind of want to go into the code and, and change things, but I, I, I do appreciate this. Um, you can uh, change some of the settings right here. Uh, like I can move the arrows and stuff. What I would like to see is the ability, and I'm wondering if they'll, they'll have this, because uh, I kind of I kind of need this for a, a future product project. What I'd like is the ability to add blocks within the sub menu that are not just menu items. So, for example, it seems like I can only add a link. What I want to be able to do is add. Some, it would be nice to add like a a row in there so I could theoretically create like a mega menu so then instead of clicking this and it's just one one list that goes down it would be like you know two or three columns kind of like what you see on a lot of sites uh, and I'm I'm betting that the, they'll probably have that in the future um, it just right now it's a little rusty or not it's not rusty it's just uh uh it's it's not quite baked enough need to need to need to rest in the oven for a couple another 15 <laughs> minutes um, but uh but it but it it, it is hand, handy and i honestly like from a developer standpoint you know like uh, looking at how how to develop these themes um, I, I, I can see where, where this is going and I, I, I like it. It's kind of like the, the block editor where it, um, you know, when it first came out, it, it was a piece of junk, I thought, uh, but I could see where it was going. And so I figured I'm going to just adopt it right now. Um, so I, I've been, uh, this is just an example of, of me just playing around, you know, Took me like an hour to do. Let me go back to the dashboard. Um, so yeah, that's uh, there, there's some other stuff that come came out with WordPress six, but those are the major ones. It, it was not like a major release. Uh, you honestly, I didn't really notice any drastic changes until I, I was playing around with things. I was like, oh, okay, I see, I see what. What they've added and, and stuff. So. Well, good. That was fun stuff. A couple of weird things, but you know, for the most part, pretty cool. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's very good. Very good. Does the navigation show up in the top as well, or is that just a front home page? Um, the navigation, uh, it can show up. Uh, wherever you want okay so uh and this is one of the reasons why i i took the all right so when, when you uh, right out of the box um so the 2022 theme has has several headers in there and they have navigation blocks the thing is is that unlike the previous unlike classic themes where you know you would 
you would have different navigation locations and you would create the menus kind of on the back end and then say, hey, I, wa I want to use this on all of the menu locations or I just want to use it on one. This works differently in that it is a block and that you, you basically have to create the, the whole thing uh, from scratch. So if you've got like multi, say you have like 12 different headers, you have to create those different, you know, each one of those is, is different, which is why I, I, I took that um, navigation block and converted it into a template because my thinking is that like, I don't want to have to create this a million times. I, I just want, you know, so I'll, I'll go into the other headers and just replace replace it with that navigation template. Um, does that answer your question? <laughs> hey, Aaron, is that because the, um, the old appearance menu is not the same as it's not used for these navigation uh, uh, blocks? Yeah, um, there is a way, like when you add a navigation if you if you're adding a navigation block and for like for the first time you can actually select a menu that say you've created on the back end or via the customizer mm -hmm. but there's some weird things that that happen because then well here let me let me show you Okay, so go up here to expand this massive thing again. Okay, there we go. Okay, so see where this says, let me open this up. See where it says select menu? Mm -hmm. All right, so I can, and it's got all of these uh, classic menus here. I can select uh, a different menu if I want. Now, okay, so now what this is where it gets tricky because these are classic menus. If I click manage menus, it's going to take me to this this page that's like, where am I? You know, nothing's highlighted over here. How did I get here? How do I get out of this? Um, you know, what happens if I click add new? And then you see it just says add new navigation menu. I'm like, huh? Okay, let me try editing this. Okay, there's nothing to edit. Wow. And then, yeah, I know it's a it's it's weird. I would say like the the navigation block is the thing that they still really need need work on. It's got lots of potential. I um and okay, so. Now, now I have, I, I have, uh, what something, I, I'm not going to uh, take everybody's time on this, but something that I noticed is that when I make changes to the navigation, like, uh, let me, let me do this right here. I'm just going to select anything. I'm going to click save. And then refresh the page. Okay, something that I discovered, and maybe it got fixed in in six point oh. What was happening was that if I I created a brand new menu and then saved it, 
it would create like a duplicate of this. So it would say like navigation two, navigation three. And, and then what happened was that I was like, what's going on here? So then I, I would go to manage menus and then end up here and be like, what, what is this? this? This, this shows nothing. So I think this is something that, um, it's, it's still got some bugs, but if I if if I want to do if I wanted to add a, a menu the old fashioned way, I still can do that. I can go to the dashboard. Oh no, I can't. This is and this is the other problem. It's like remember where you, you could get to the me menus. You can't do that. Actually, uh, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. You could, there, there's a way to do it. The, oh, sorry. Um, the way to do it is be to switch to a different theme. And now, oh, here are the menus. And now I can, you know, I, I could make the modifications this way and then go back to the other theme and, and, and select that. But yeah, that's, that's another, another problem. So the menus, it's um it, it need it needs some work but that yeah that's got a lot of gotchas in there um everything else i i think is great you know there's understandably some limitations but yes the menus is like the the the, the big problems because now you don't have a way to modify you're kind of forced into this way of of doing it and it's it's extremely limit limiting. Um, anyway, WordPress six. Oh, thanks. Thanks. I see it now how it works. Yeah. So that's good. It does work. Yeah. Yeah. It does work. Okay. Well, thank you, Aaron. That's great. Yeah. Good stuff. All right. Let me uh, stop sharing. And here we are back at everybody else. All right. Well, that uh, was more than 20 minutes there, Aaron. No, oh, golly, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I should know when people say they've got 20 minutes of material, it's an hour. Yeah, <laughs> I, I knew that the navigation was going to be this thing that would take forever. <laughs> so so uh, we are past the hour here. Um, but if anybody has any questions they want to ask the group, uh, certainly feel free to. I do, yeah, so I, have a, I do have a question. Yeah. On our website, we have like uh, two rows where we have one row, which is the blog post, we, our favorite uh, blog posts. And then the other one is a, a row of our favorite uh, YouTube posts that we have. But I manually have to go in there and, you know, point to the blog post, put the title in. And then in the case of YouTube, I have to go you know paste a link into a youtube widget and and do that is there a way to kind of automate that so i could just every time we post a video to youtube that row of four updates to the top four isn't that is, is you're in gutenberg right yeah 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 so we're you know you go to our website i have a page set up where i just manually paste in the thumbnail and the link and the title Every time we post, or not every time, but for the ones we post to YouTube that we like. But it'd be nice if you could like have all of the YouTube stuff show up on that page. Or if, there's, sort of a, or if there's a block that would just automatically post the latest YouTube video. The blog post is one thing, but the YouTube videos is the problem. Uh, anybody know anything there? I mean, you're talking about a widget that or uh, that would go out and look at your YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah. and then bring in the very and latest. Bring in the latest. Yeah, we have a um, we have a uh, in social media plugin called Beacons, and it does that. So there's got to be some way that they're pulling the latest YouTube video because they're really just updating a web page. It's not just the latest. You know, do you want to be able to say I want to show two or four or eight or whatever else? Well, right? I mean, I would just like be happy with the latest. <laughs> Yeah, because hmm. with the YouTube block we use now, you just basically put the YouTube URL in there, and it yeah, there's no like it pulls it. Yeah, right? 
Uh, have, have, you, have you ever heard of Smash Balloon? Smash Balloon? Yeah, I'm going to yeah. include a link. They've got, um, we, we use them at work for our Instagram feed, uh, but they have, they have something that, that uh, does the same for YouTube. So what it does is that it, it takes your YouTube feed and mm. pulls it in. And I'm, I'm presuming that you configure it to, to where it will basically just show a list of your videos. Yeah, Smash Balloon's awesome. I use it for Facebook, too. It's third, too, on your searches for YouTube feed plugin on DuckDuckGo. Well, that, that may be the answer. Looks like there's a couple plugins out there for a YouTube feed. You'll probably have to, you know, you'll have to authenticate or get tokens or whatever so they know it's you. Yeah, and I think the, the question of who do you trust? <laughs> so I've used Smash and Aaron's used Smash Balloon. I've used it for Facebook, he's used it for Instagram. So there's well, two people that awesome. are happy with that company. Yeah, that that'd be, cool. that'd be, be pretty cool. Thanks. That sounds really cool, actually. Yeah. Yeah, because I we use a program called PostGrid Pro, which is great for you know putting up the blog posts and in, in the grids, and you can sort it by category and all that live on the page, and that works pretty well. Maybe I should also contact them and see if they they can come up with a with a post grid for social media channels because that'd be because it would be nice to pull it right instead of someone having to go say go go to you know at my home at YouTube, we could just say go to our website and bring more traffic to us, and everything's there. They can navigate over to it with, without having to leave the site. To get the functionality you want, though, you may have to go premium. You know, they always give you the free via, premium version, but uh, yeah, I don't mind that. I mean, if it's not too crazy, we pay for something. I mean, PostScript Pro, we pay for the pre, the Pro version and a bunch of other plugins. I don't mind paying if it gives you value, right? So and it and it works. <laughs> so, thanks. Yeah, Mary, and you have your right hand raised. I, yeah, I haven't been um, in this group for a long time, actually, since the Urban Hive days, and haven't had anything on online since I, I think I was using um, Bluehost. So I wanted to ask, and maybe if people want to email or talk about it next time, if there's not time tonight, to ask if people recommend certain favorite um, hosting. Does anyone, does everyone use different hosting? Oh, no, or? We use Ocean hosting. I like them because they have 24 seven support by chat. Who do you use? Who did you say? In motion hosting. Oh, yeah, I second in motion. Yeah. I, I like SiteGround because of the, uh, all the stuff you get with it. SiteGround gives you a lot like emails, for example, free emails with the sites. Okay. That's kind of cool. We do have a name hero representative on the call, though. <laughs> I uh, I wasn't going to chime in because I, I, <laughs> I asked the topic there, but yeah, you can always reach out to me if you want to talk hosting as well. Oh, okay. What's the, what's the name hero? What's, what's that? that? What's the name hero? Give us the uh, blurb. I am the I'm a the sales and support supervisor for name hero uh, namehero.com. We're a primarily shared and reseller based hosting provider that uses uh, light speed based servers. And uh, yeah, it, oh, that's that's why I didn't jump in because obviously I'm, <laughs> I'm going to probably sound a little bit biased to tell you I'm the best ever, but you know, but um, just, well, just give us your pitch then. Give us a pitch. Yeah. What's your elevator pitch? I should have you like hiding in the background. Um, so I actually gave us a, a talk several months ago about light speed based servers which is on our which it's on our youtube channel yeah it's, yeah he did uh, you you it's on our uh sac wordpress meetup youtube channel oh okay i'll check that out yeah. the thing about light speed based servers if you haven't used light speed before is just the integration and how easy it is to use to set up so with light speed um, there's a light speed cache plugin that you can install into wordpress that works in tandem with Lightspeed on the server level, so you, it eliminates the need for like WP Rocket 
and that sort of thing. Um, the Lightspeed Cache plugin also includes like image optimization. They have their own CDN that's built in, which is free. You get, you know, their, which is called Quick Cloud. Uh, and that's all basically integrated through one plugin. So it's basically a tight knit package where you don't have to, you know, you don't have to go to Cloudflare for your CDN. You don't have to go to WP Rocket for your caching. It kind of just ties it all together um, in a more nice package, in my opinion, I guess. So they're using their lithium crystals, it sounds like. <laughs> yeah. Wow, they're, cool. Uh, definitely interesting. If you ever, if you want to ever check it out, I can, um, I can set you up a free account and you can always try it out too if you want. Oh, thank you. I'll watch that video and check it out. And then I forgot what the first one was called. In, 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 home. what did you call yours? In, in motion hosting. In motion hosting. Okay. Yeah, I am right. motion hosting. Thank you. Yeah. You said you were using Bluehost. Are you having a problem with that? Um, no, that was a while back. I just haven't been. Um, Using WordPress, I've been doing other stuff on other social media for some time, and a lot of my WordPress sites are playing, you know, just experiments and haven't been published. And now I'm getting to a point where I want to go back to it, and um, I want to feel I I'm never really, you know, recommendations are welcome because I'm just not that confident about about hosting or you know what what the op i mean i know by now there's a lot more different options like mark's just you know well as, as a host other, other than myself I, I i would i think everyone can agree everyone uh bluehost is owned by a larger company called uh endurance which is now newfold digital and if you do um just some background on hosting companies owned by them um it's generally not a solid base host uh, you know i if i would have to pick other providers i'd pick something like like uh in, in motion is not bad like he said um a2 hosting um a2 hosting has lightspeed based servers kind of like we do a uh, similar performance in my say opinion. the last one again uh um in um a2 hosting and then the next one you said uh it was in motion like um someone yeah. else mentioned um, and you said something else. Oh, I thought I thought you said a third one. I put them in the chat. And what is the Bluehost? What is the parent company now? It used to be a group called Endurance International. Um, they're now called New Full Digital. But if you just do a search for Endurance International Group, um, you'll get a whole list of hosts that they own, and it they're they're all pretty valley. Yeah. Groups. I, I, I moved away from Bluehost after they got bought out because their quality kind of seemed to go down. Uh -huh. Okay, good. Good to know. Thank you. I, I generally get pretty good support from, from SiteGround, too. Yeah, I mean, okay. I, use, I use their chat support, and it's usually pretty fast, and I... SiteGround's not bad, in my opinion. I just, yeah. I don't like their, their panel. I'm, I'm, I'm more into... Oh. Um, more into the channel, you know. Yeah. Okay. About it. Yeah. What about? Uh, the oh, did you have more, Marion? Oh, I was curious what he was saying about the panel. Oh, they have a proprietary hosting panel. So if you if you build a site on SiteGround, it's um, a bit difficult to move compared to if you use a host that has something like CPanel or Plesk. You could then move pretty much easier to a new host if you needed to. It just makes it a bit difficult to move when they're using their proprietary panel is all. Hmm. I've, I've moved things to SiteGround. I haven't moved things away. <laughs> so. All right. Sounds good. Thanks. Thanks a lot. By the way, the, the video of uh, Mark from a few months back there, um, that's probably last year, we, that video. Um, he also talks about how to migrate sites. So it's cool. Check that out. Uh, uh, Katie, you had uh, your hand up. Hi, thank you. Um, just a quick question. Um, I'm kind of a novice still with WordPress, but it was mentioned that um, we have three different WordPress sites on our virtual um, server. Um, and it was mentioned that we might 
be good to do a multi-site network. And I was wondering if anybody's had experience with WordPress multi-site networks before and what you might suggest. Good question. I use multi-sites, but it's just like a one-page scroller. So I just keep it really simple. And that'd be the only time that I would use a multi-site. If, if you have like a lot of pages or you need a lot of plugins or functionality, then you might just want to keep them separate. Okay. Yeah, no, they're all pretty basic sites, just pages and such. So, okay. Well, I'll check it out some more. Thanks. Nice because you can share plugins, right? So that's the great beauty of, of it. Mm -hmm. uh, you can update in one spot. So you're updating all your plugins and it's nice for that. But, you know, if, if you really do need special use cases where you're using, you know, one plugin or a few plugins for one site, you're better off. Okay. Keeping okay. it not multi. Yeah. Okay. Um, you, you know, Beth, before when, when these meetups used to be over at, um, I'm looking through these, uh, we're at YouTube here. When the uh, meetups, a few years ago, we're running and done over at the uh, Urban Hive. There was a presentation. Someone did a presentation on multi-site. So I'm, I'm looking through. I mean, I'm looking through the our, our YouTube channel here. Um, check out the Word, Sacramento WordPress Meetup YouTube channel, and it would probably be like pre-pandemic. It would be like 2019 or something like that, or 2018 maybe even that someone did a multi, I definitely remember a multi-site. It was, it was uh, Jose that did that. Oh, okay. So yeah, I just sat, looked Sacramento WordPress meetup multi-site, but it didn't, it didn't come up in there. So I'm just, I would just go to Sacramento meet, WordPress meetup channel first and then search for it there. So I'm, okay. I'm, I'm having a hard time Great. finding it right now. So. Great. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. And it, like I say, it would be, it's probably going to be a 2019 or something. Okay. Sacramento WordCamp, the last one too, also had a multi-site um, seminar. You might be able to catch that if it's posted. Oh. Okay. 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 Great. Well, thank you. Thank you for all the tips. Yeah. All right. Anybody else before we break for dinner? <laughs> That was um, that was good, Aaron. Thank you for doing that. Yeah, that was great. Uh, a six point thing was fantastic. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna play around with it because you know I have a couple sites I need to update, and that'll be fun. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Don't. A great question. Don't forget, question, don't forget yeah. to use uh, local WP. Yeah, don't, I just do uh, updated that. <laughs> What's that? Don't, don't do it on don't live. Don't try site. it on a live site. No, no, no. I just updated local, and so I'm going to play with it there. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Cool. Well, all right, everybody. That was fun. Yeah. Good to meet up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. It's great seeing everybody. Good questions, everybody, too. Really good. So. All right. Thanks. All right. All right. We will catch you uh, in a month. All right. All right. All right. Good good there, right. Thanks, folks. Thanks. Have, a good, okay. have a good June. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have a good election. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot. It snuck up on me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. See you guys. All right. Good night.